Hello, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today we will be going to Austin, Texas for some plant shopping. This is my Austin, Texas plant shopping series where I will show you a big box store and a couple of plant nurseries. But our first location obviously will be a big box store. So this one is a Lowe's in Austin, Texas. So oftentimes I visit Lowe's in North Dallas, which is where I'm based at. But today I have a special treat to show you guys what a Lowe's looks like in Austin, Texas. So if you haven't already, please make sure you are hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel, Grow Folds. Um, I would really love the support and it will just definitely push more um, of my videos to different people. But as you can see, this Lowe's already has a bunch of their vegetables and herbs out um the weather is perfect here texas weather is starting to really feel like spring so i'm very excited to see how full these um lowe's locations are going to be in the next couple of weeks and you can see right over here we've got some tropical plants we've got some hibiscus some mandevilla flowers right over here um these are plants that i want to go ahead and start growing in my um, outdoor patio but we will see and as you can see right off the bat when we walk into this Lowe's, it's already super full. It's a little bit more full than the ones out in North Dallas. So super excited to see this. And you can see they've got their annuals, they've got their blooming plants, they've got their um, hanging baskets of ferns. And can we say that these ferns, these hanging baskets are super full? And this is one that I will often see, especially in Texas grown. And these are potato plant vines this one is a variegated version love the look of this one look at the pink variegation the cream variegation very easy plant to grow i've tried to grow potato vines indoors but they don't do as well they end up getting spider mites so they're more of a um, plant planter outside now mind you these uh, potato vines grow very vigorously and if they end up on the ground they can attach and actually take over your yard so that's just one of those plants that are very fast growing and we're passing by here it looks like they have their clearance plants outside of their their main section and they've got some more plants right over here these ones are probably the overhead flow of all of the exotic angel plants from costa farms and right over at this section, we've got a bunch of large foliage plants. So we've got a massive spathophyllum or what you call a peace lily. That one is in bloom. Love peace lily leaves. Look at how large the leaves are, lush and full and green. Definitely could be a statement peace plant, especially for a dark corner, just because peace lilies can tolerate lower light conditions. And then we've got some hanging baskets right over here as well. So this one is another Hoya Carnosa. I believe this one is a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. Love that. I have one growing in my kitchen. That one actually has done very well for me. It started to push out a bunch of new leaves. But as you can see, this Lowe's is nice and organized, nice and full, nice and big right over here. And then let's take a look at this. So wow so this is actually really cool i don't actually see these fixtures where they have a whole section where it's like live trends live trends and urban jungle i love the merchandising i am already seeing at this lowe's location very nice and organized i like how they have similar plants together i love how all of their plants for the most part I don't really see any um, unhealthy plants are looking very nice and healthy. So right off the bat, we'll take a look at this. This one is um, a Calathea dotty right over here. Now this one might need just a little bit of water. It is in a self-watering planter for $15.98. Um, and this is by Costa Farms as well. We see um, Calathea dotties often. I do love the, um, the color of it. And then right over here, this is an interesting plant. So this is a sweat plant. I don't know what a sweat plant is, but you can see that there's a, it looks almost like fern or some type of ground cover. I, I do like the texture of the leaves. Not sure if I would grow this long term at home or what the plant care tips would look like. I'm thinking it would be one that would need a lot of humidity just because it looks more like a fern. And then speaking of ferns, we've got some button um, fern right over here. That's really a nice looking fern love the um the texture of the leaves it's very precious looking for sure now this is for 2098 both of these hanging baskets are for 2098 the first ones i've shown you so that's nice and then right over here as i pan away you can see that all the plants are nice and organized so austin is already giving me some amazing plant experiences even at the big box store and then right over here we've got 
um, another trade scantia this one is a baby um Tread Scantia. I like this one a lot. This one is for $20.98. Um, this one is a little bit more delicate looking than some of the Tread Scantia I'm growing. I have a Tread Scantia Nanook that has larger foliage leaves, a Tread Scantia Roxo that also has large, larger foliage leaves. So this one is a little bit smaller. Now with Tread Scantia, you've got to really clip it back in order for it to stay nice and full. And then right over here is a plant that I actually want to end up um, getting in my home collection at some point. This is a Peperomia teardrop. This one's the variegated form. What I like about it is it looks to be like an easy plant. Um, it's nice and full, that hanging basket, and that's for $20.98. And then if you are a beginner for houseplants, get this um, Golden Pothos right here, Epipremnum Arium Golden Pothos or Jade, depending on what you think about the variegation. This one has low variegation, so I would really call it more so the Jade. But um, this one's for $15.98 in a self-watering planter. I do find these really interesting. It's not one that I would buy in my collection, but Costa Farms has combination plants. So we've got a Fetonia, a Dracaena um, Florida Beauty, and um, a Dracaena Marginata. Those are really nice, and I think these are for $17.97. They call this beautiful home decor. I would say it is very nice looking combination and this one I would actually just buy for the croton this is um, a beautiful croton because you could see the gradation of the colors it looks like it is a flame you got the red the orange and the yellow L really like how that um, croton has pushed out that type of coloration right next to the palm and then we also have a um, epipremnum arium golden pothos or not pothos um, a marble queen pothos so um, the I would say most of the plants in this um, combination have similar care tips except the um, pothos right there, the Marble Queen pothos. Not sure if the Marble Queen can really take as much of the light as the Croton would need and the Palm. So this would just definitely need to have high light conditions in order to really thrive. It is in a self-watering planter, so it does take the guessing game away from um, watering the plants. I do like that. And it is for $17.97. So very interesting um, combination of plants plants long term i don't think that those plants would survive in a in a container like that just because crotons will get large the palm will definitely get large and right over here we've got a zz plant zz plants are very easy as well um, this is in a self-watering planter for $15.98 and i've noticed that this austin lowe's location they've got the plants organized by size and section like i like the fact that they've got all the aglonema siam auroras or red aglonema um siam that one looks really nice as well and look at all of how um, healthy they are I've been getting into actually growing um, aglonema in hydroponic situations. Um, and for those that are new to what the term hydroponic is, it means that I would grow these plants with no soil and they would just be put into a bowl full of water. Um, I've got a couple that I'm going to actually convert this week. And right over here, we got a philodendron heteracium Brazil. Beautiful variegation. Look at that. You can't go wrong with getting a Philodendron Heteracium Brazil. They have similar growth habit in terms of the Epipremnum Arium or Pothos. Um, they are slightly slower in growth, but they're very easy to propagate as well. So you can have many propagations. You can see that they've got a lot of nodes already that you can cut off, put in water in about two weeks. You'll have some rooted cuttings to put in to the hanging basket. That's my trick in terms of keeping a hanging basket full is to continue to propagate from the um, trailing nodes and then putting them back into the pot and then right over here we've got another peperomia teardrop now this one is not the variegated version but notice how beautiful the leaves are they're nice and full they look healthy they've got a nice natural um, satin finish about them i would love to grow this in my houseplant collection as well it would be very interesting to see this trailing um, since it is in a hanging basket love hanging baskets um, it's one of those things that before I didn't grow hanging baskets in my houseplant collection because I didn't want to plant or I didn't want to drill holes into my ceiling, but I did find some command strip hooks that can hold up to 33 pounds. Um, bought it off Amazon and they are doing fabulous for the Hoyas that I have growing in my kitchen ceiling. So, and then we've got more Hoyas over there, but I did want to pan over again and show you guys the Aglonema Red Siams. Um, Aglonema are gorgeous plants 
they have nice um, foliage they've got nice stems i love the different colors of the stems and if you are a plant foldy and for those that are new to the channel i call my viewers plant foldies please buy yourself an aglonema you will not go wrong with getting an aglonema and you can see that this is also a, a random plant that somebody probably changed your mind and this is a Justina janet craig compacta i since i've been doing plant shopping videos for the past two months consistently um if you're joining the channel i do one hour videos every single day we have a live premiere chat i noticed that the two plants i have featured in all my videos would be an aglonema red siam and to my surprise the dracaena janet craig compacta they're just very common plants but very easy to care for plants and then right over here we've got a hoya of some sort look at this hoya look at how beautiful the leaves are look at how it is trailing and this one is for 20.98 i would love to start growing more hoya in my houseplant collection i'm curious to see how to get hoya to bloom because some people don't really grow hoya for the foliage although i think that the waxy texture of the leaves are precious but more so for the bloom so um does it require more light do they just bloom in cycles is there a season if you are in the live premiere chat please let me know in the chats or even leave a comment um leaving comments on my videos that i posted um really help my channel grow just because um youtube really does reward engagement and i obviously love engaging with you guys and then right over here we've got a fortune fern um hanging basket this one has some really cool textures to the leaves i like the leaf shape the leaves are a little bit larger than the typical fern um, we had a discussion not too long ago with other plant subscribers about how ferns are just such finicky plants like they're are they more of like a terrarium only plant i was thinking about getting like a heart leaf fern but everybody says that those are really finicky even though they have such a beautiful shape and that one right that i just was showing actually has a beautiful shape to its leaves as well and we've got to take a look at all of these trending tropicals raven's easy plants i love raven's easies and to my surprise raven's easies are actually a little bit more vigorous in growth um, than I thought they actually push out new growth and what I love about the new growth is you can definitely tell that you're getting new growth because of the green stems the light green stems that darken over time into the black um, foliage very uh, very beautiful looking plant is what I'm trying to say and these ones are for 20 not 20 1987 and then right over here we've got an aglonema golden fluorite so I've been calling this aglonema a golden papaya but honestly I am so sorry that I've been calling it the golden papaya it's actually the golden fluorite the thing about aglonema it's easy to make those mistakes for plant IDs because they're very similar in what they look like this is by trending tropicals costa farms it's another aglonema I would suggest especially ones that could light up a space in the, your room just because look at how nice the leaves look how bright that yellow is and I love the rain the veining of the, the red veining the pink stems are also a nice interest too so with aglonemas there's just so much going on with them now in order to keep them full there are a couple of things you want to do you want to first of all make sure that um, you prevent it from getting leggy so aglonemas actually shed their bottom leaves as they grow um, especially when they're not happy so overwatering is a number one thing that you could do for aglonemas to kill them um, their roots actually rot easily now they are a super easy um, plant aside from that so if you're not an overwaterer then this plant is for you and costa farms has actually made it easy for us to grow aglonema especially in these self-watering planters you don't have to really worry about having to go water the plant because you have a water reservoir with the wick that pulls up the water so i like that a lot and then these two are nice i'm glad to see that costa farms is pushing more of those aglonema pink siams so there's the red siam with the red um outlines but this one's the pink siam where you have um, a very subtle pink um outline and also the stems are a pastel pink these are for 1987 or 1989 um us um dollar so i do have a lot of um international viewers from plant foldies shout out to my canadian plant foldies i hope you guys get some more plants in canada you'd be surprised about all of the plants that we get imported from canada it looks like a lot of your nurseries are sourcing them out but the ones that we're looking at right here are from florida um by costa farms anyways 
nice looking aglonemas this austin lowe's is giving me such amazing merchandising and organization vibes i love that all of their plants look healthy and when you know whenever we go big box store plant shopping these are factors that i would think you would need to um, factor in when buying a house plant like right over here, we've got a Raphidophora tetrasperma by Costa Farms. Love the self-watering planters. I can't get enough of those. Um, but to go back to that subject of mer plant merchandising, plant health, plant presentation at a big box store, I do believe that if the, the actual big box takes the time to organize the plants, keep them healthy, keep them neat, keep them clean, get rid of dead foliage, then that should be a good sign that um, the plants that you are gonna buy will most likely be healthy. Obviously you wanna do due diligence and ex examine the plants. In the previous videos I've talked about it, but to summarize what you need to look for when you're buying a plant at a big box store, number one, check to see if the plant is over water because if it is, it might have some root rot. Number two, check the soil to see if there's any pests. Number three, double definitely check the undersides of the leaves for any pests if you see any webbings that could be a sign of spider mites if you see any white fuzzy splotches that could be a sign of mealybugs definitely don't buy the plant and if you find um, a plant that has pests you definitely don't want to um, buy the plants that are, that are nearby because pests do spread quickly so just um a couple of tips and you can see right over here, they've got these hanging baskets displayed beautifully. I love this a lot. This is a strawberry begonia. I ended up finding a variegated version of the strawberry begonia at a local plant nursery called Callaway's that I um, intend to repot in a three inch planter at this week. Um, this week I'm actually on vacation from work until Saturday. So I will have a lot of time to catch up on some plant chores, um, edit some videos and just do things that bring me joy. And then right over here, we got another variegated teardrop. This one is looking a little bit leggy and not as full. So this is one of the first plants I've seen that is not the best. Um, this one I would actually, if I were this Lowe's, to actually clearance out just because it's still salvageable. And I want to pan over here. So Lowe's has some of these cool self-watering wick and grow planters. I love these because you can see that there is a water reservoir and let me show you a little demonstration. Most plants that are sold at um, Lowe's have a wick um, and this one is meant to be in a self-watering planter. This is a Tracina Sandriana. You can see the little wick right at the very bottom. And you would just fill that um, self-watering planter with some water at the reservoir and bam, you stick it on top. Um, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. And um, let's get rid of that dead leaf right over here. And voila, you have a nice looking plant. I would trim the, the brown um, the browning on the tips, but nonetheless, it's nice. And right over here, we've got a Hedera Helix, Bettina or a Hedra Helix, guys. English Ivy. I love this. Um, this is my second English Ivy I have in my plant collection and it's doing well. There's not any spider mites. You know, you got to stay on top of these English Ivy. But again, let's go ahead and put it in a self-watering planter and you can see how nice it is. So you can see it's very easy. Um, Lowe's makes it easy to grow plants in these wick um, planters. I don't know if you actually grow wick planters. Um, plant foldies, let me know if you use self-watering planters. I think they're amazing. Um, I'm not necessarily a fan about the shiny ceramic um, glaze they have. I wish they were more of a matte finish or even a stoneware type look. That's kind of the aesthetic I'm looking for for my planters. But needless to say, it's a very nice looking um, planter and it makes it easy to grow plants. And you can see that there were a bunch of um, ferns as well in a six inch planter. And we've got just a lot of plants here and I like how they have their, their sections nice and organized. I can't get enough of that. We've got another beautiful looking Hoya here. I'm not sure what this Hoya, specific Hoya species is. So if you are in the live premiere chat or in the comments section watching this again, please leave the um, plant ID. I love learning from you guys. And that's the thing about my plant shopping videos. It's really meant for us to have an open dialogue, for me to talk about my, the plants, give you my personal commentary. And even if I am showing you a lot of the plants that you've seen in previous videos, it's always nice just to meet up and um, look at plants in general. 
Right over here, we've got some black rabbit's um, foot fern. You can see that the little um, aerial roots are looking nice. They're, they're fuzzy. They kind of look like, like tarantula um, legs, to be honest, in a creepy way. Um, these are for $20.98 in a hanging basket, and this one's actually super full. I am really tempted to get a black rabbit's foot fern. I just see this often. It's speaking to me. It's saying, take me home. But I don't know if I need to be doing that just because... Um, I don't do well with plants that actually require a lot of light. I would say these days I am more of an underwaterer just because I've killed so many plants over watering. So I tend to overshoot um, or undershoot whether I water or not. And then this right here is a flame violet. I love the flame violet, especially in a hanging basket. And the more I look at this plant, the more I appreciate its like nuances. So not only is it shiny and shimmery, it's also furry and it looks to be like a vigorous grower because you can see all of the new growth. And that was another thing I was gonna say, aside from checking for pests when buying plants at a big box store, look for a plant that has like active growth points or leaves unfurling. That means that the plant is healthy um and let's take a look at over let's take a look at this one this one is an asterisk hedera helix or hedra helix um this one is really nice because this one is for 2098 um i like the different leaf shape of this one it does look like an asterisk actually i like that it's clever there's a couple of um yellowing on the leaves so that always makes me nervous when i look at um english ivy because they are very much spider mite prone you can see there is some active growth for this one i just don't know if you can really grow um English Ivy long-term indoors. They are really meant to be outdoors. I know that whenever I grow them outdoors, I never really have issues with spider mites or pests, and they actually grow a lot faster. But the two that I have, I'm doing the Hedra Helix Challenge that I have on Instagram, where I grow a variegated or just some type of English Ivy for a month and a half to see if it will get spider mites, and as of late, it has not. So I'm very excited about that. I've got an anthurium here. Love anthuriums, not only for the blooms, although the red blooms are beautiful. I like the leaves, that um, pointy arrow-shaped leaf. And I think um, anthuriums would be great for hydroponics, just because when I look at the roots, they've really got an intent, you know, extensive root system. Their roots are actually nice and thick. They almost remind me of like succulent type roots. They're very thick and can hold a lot of water. And this one right here is actually an interesting anthurium. I I like different colored anthuriums and you can see this one's got um, purple lavender looking ones I actually got my first anthurium at another local plant nursery called Green Acres a nursery and supply out in Irving Texas so if you're watching this video and discovering my channel for the first time, please definitely take a look at that um, plant nursery tour. I've actually organized a lot of my um, plant nursery tours and just big box shops on my YouTube channel. So there's different playlists. So if you want to binge my uh, my videos and I would highly recommend and encourage that, definitely check that out. I've been doing a lot of um, re-imaging for my YouTube channel just because our community is growing and I want to give you guys more um, organized content. And you can see we are looking at some Dracaenas right over here. Love Dracaenas. Um, I didn't realize that their other um, name for Dracaenas are Dragon's um, Tree. So that's really cool. Dracaenas are one of the easiest plants to take care of. Definitely underwater them versus overwater them. They don't require a lot of bright and direct light. They can tolerate lower light conditions and they get very large as well or can grow up to three to four feet tall. So that's awesome. And we're going to pan out away from here. And you can see how gorgeous all of these plants are, how healthy they are. Austin is bringing me a lot of joy. I am discovering new plants and I'm loving that their big box stores are nice and organized. I love these little terrarium setups that um, Live Trends has as well. Definitely trendy presentation. And I like that they have this end cap with hanging baskets. Live Trends has some of the best planters. Like look at this red marantha hanging basket, but I would like to even say this planter is really nice as well. Um, so Live Trends tends to have a little bit more expensive plants or just a little bit more pricey plants, but you're paying for the planter and this one is a nice one as well. Love the modern um, sleek look about the planter. I really like just very simple um, matte finishes like this. Um, I don't even mind the speckling, the subtle speckling. It's a very modern looking planter. And then we've got some air plants right over here by Live Trends. 
nice looking decoration for sure and i'm going to move some of these um air plants out of the way because here is a hoya cumbigiana cumiana cumbigiana or however you pronounce it this is a hoya that actually is very um na i mean is native to the philippines and this one's for 1898 on a trellis very nice looking hoya what I like about this is obviously I, my family and myself are from the Philippines. So anything that is endemic or something that you see in a specific country like the Philippines may, brings me a lot of joy. Um, I can't wait to make a, um, a trip to the Philippines to be able to show you guys all of the native um, plants there. But this one is specifically a Hoya that you can find in the Philippines. And I heard that the blooms are amazing. Love the trellis on this Hoya right over here. Um, this one is actually one that I would put in my plant collection. And then this one is for $18.98. I like that a lot. And I like that they have a special on it. Like they've got a little plant ID and just some more details about that. And then Live Trends has another plant here. This is for $24.98. This is another croton. I would call this the Croton Batik, but I'm not 100% sure. The leaves are a little darker in its like foliage. What I love about Crotons is that they definitely have a lot of diversity in their leaf shapes and colors. This one is really cool. This one has more like subtle splotches. I say subtle for a Croton because this is pretty blunt um, in the coloration, but I do like that a lot. And then we've got somebody who changed their mind. I do want to show you this Petunia. This is definitely meant to grow outside love the um peppermint looking pep um, petunia this one's for 7.98 and then we've got another beautiful um hanging basket and planter this is um a philodendron heteraceum i like the leaf um the leaf shine as well um so you know phil philodendron heteraceum definitely has some natural leaf shine definitely a fan of that and then look at that beautiful croton as well crotons definitely need a lot of bright light i've been able to grow mine in full sun but as you can see when i pan out i love that they have these um different types of fixtures for these aisles of plants this one is a tornado fern or a hurricane bird's nest fern by um, Live Trends in a, um, another planter. The only critique I would say for Live um, Trends is I wish they would skip on putting top dressing of fake um, moss. I think that actually harbors pests. Like if you were to water it, you could have like fungus gnats and things like that. I know aesthetically it might look nice, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of like top dressing. If I'm gonna top dress or put something on top of the soil, it would be more like gravel or rocks. So that way there's a level of, um, you know, rocks that the pests can't grow, you know, lay their eggs in, but you can see super organized. Kudos to you, Austin. You know, they call Austin, you know, they say Austin, keep it, keeping Austin weird. How about keeping Austin organized? Because the live, um, you know, just this big box store has very, or, you know, good organization for their plants. All of their plants are healthy and they're offering plants I haven't seen often at a big box store in North Dallas. This is a Epipremnum Amplissimum Silver Streak look at that this one i haven't really seen at any of our lowe's locations in north dallas nice looking um silver streak pothos look at the leaf shape i have just a green version growing but that's really nice right next to its aglonema that i don't know but you can see i love the live trends and then the urban jungle fixtures and it just looks very modern and organized like i love how they have the den uh the the or what was i trying to say the orchids the or the hanging orchids there and they have these end caps with these beautiful um urban jungle planters for 22.98 now this one i keep forgetting the plant id for this this is one that i thought about getting as well it kind of reminds me of a palm it kind of has a weed type looking plant um but anyways if anybody knows a plant id for this plant please let me know i love the um the undersides the chocolate brown undersides of the leaves very nice looking and that's the thing about plants you can enjoy them from bottom view like this or top view there are some plants that can kind of lend itself to both like this one you can see from the top view you can get this beautiful green foliage and then from the bottom obviously that dark um, red or maybe um, brown foliage but nice looking plants from urban jungle kudos to this lowe's for keeping it organized 
I like that a lot. I love it a lot, actually. It inspires me to actually want to buy plants from here, but I'm doing my very, my very best not to buy any more plants I don't need. And then this one is a Shiflera Moondrop. I love this Shiflera because of the subtle variegation. That albo looking variegation is very nice. And the leaves are a little bit more compact. Shiflera's are also called umbrella plants. They do require a little bit more bright and direct light. They want to keep their soil not completely dry, but not completely wet as well. So it's just a, a, a solid, you know, keeping it moist. And I'm just going to organize these plants a little bit, make it a little bit easier for the employees here. But that's really nice. Very inspiring. Plan Foldies watching this um, live premiere chat or even just team replay. Let me know in the comments or the live premiere chat what you think about the organization. I love how they have all of these hanging baskets or organized they have different levels of um, hanging baskets and then they've got this bottom section here with more plants definitely looks like an urban jungle and it's definitely live trends screaming look at this right here another live trends um shallow bowl of sansevieria it's like this one is actually pretty cool i do like that the moss works for this and they've got some red lava rocks and then right over here we've got an upgrade planter by costa farms this is a curly locks hedra helix or a um english ivy this one is for 7.98 not a bad looking planter. I do like the um, the texture of this planter as well. And even the look, just that matte finish, matte um, neutral tone for the plants. That's nice. And then we've got a bunch of Syngoniums right over here. I'm going to say that these are some type of Syngonium illusions. This one is for $9.98 nice looking syngonium i love the planter color that terracotta look is nice very traditional very classic very sleek and modern and that's the thing about your plants you can get a beautiful looking plant like the syngonium but if the presentation looks very cluttered or the planter isn't really matching what the plant looks you know what accentuates the plant then it doesn't really do well for you um, i do like this a lot though look at the leaves of the syngonium very um round leaves so syngoniums can have um can differentiate them with like very narrow arrowheads to more round ones i like the more round ones i think that they're precious and i even look at the veining and the subtle coloration of the leaves very easy plant to grow they do not like to be underwatered when you underwater a syngonium that is when you start to see pests they start to get unhappy. Um, things that can be susceptible to syngonium would be spider mites and mealybugs. Um, so just definitely keep a look at it for that. Syngoniums can do very well with higher um, humidity. If you grow it up a mo moss pole or a totem pole, they will climb up and their leaves will get gigantic. So just some more tidbits about the syngoniums. I'm just gonna help this Lowe's out and merchandise them just a little bit more. Now this looks really nice and organized. And then we've got some more plants right over here. And I've noticed that this Lowe's doesn't overpack the plants to the point where they're just jammed um, together. There is a level of um, organization. I like this, for instance, this Syngonia Maria. Dark foliage plants are nice. This one is for $13.98. And I love the leaf shape and the leaf um, shine on this. It's very inspiring whenever you see plants that are just healthy and organized. For me, it inspires me to want to go home, you know, cut off all of the dead um, leaves on my plants, which you should really be doing because they har they could harbor pests, um, and just really clean my, my plant leaves, get them organized, dust around the shelves, vacuum, and like mop. So as you can tell, that's probably the, the things I'm going to be doing all this week to get my plants organized and ready for spring. Um, and then right over here, we've got a dendrobium or orchid. I think I said that right, dendrobium orchids. Dendrobium orchids remind me more so of like canes and bamboo. I like that their um, their flower has a different look. And then you can see right over here, somebody's put a hanging basket of um, plant right over there. That's not a, um, a urban jungle plant. That one was uh, Costa Farms plant, uh, Peperomia Ginny. But right over here, we've got a prayer plant, just a regular one. I was able to find a variegated prayer plant at a Lowe's. I probably should have bought that one just because those are a little bit harder to find. But again, it's all about perspective and how much um, space you have and how much time you have to invest in the plants. I know that I am at capacity for my plants. 
And then right over here, we've got a Calathea Dotty in a self-watering, not a self-watering planter, just a regular um, trending tropical ceramic planter. This one is for $19.98. And then we've also got a Skindapsis Truberi Moonlight right next to it. And then we've got another um, Silver Streak Pothos right over here. I like that a lot. This one isn't as perfect as the other ones that were featured um, on the other table, but you can see this Lowe's location in Austin is giving us some really nice looking plants. Like this is a Raphidophora Heyi, Heyi, however you want to call it, but this is a shingle vine plant. I saw a bunch of these actually released um, not too long ago, but now they're coming back um, in self-watering planters. So that's super cool. And then we've got a couple more um, trending tropical plants right over here. These ones, we've got a Monstera, not a Monstera. This one is an Epipremnum panatum, um, Baltic Blue. Now with this um, Epipremnum panatum, this one fenestrates without having to be on a pole. And then right over here, we've got a, pep a Peperomia Red Luna. That's really cool. It looks like one of those Peperomia um, raisinets that you would see at Kroger, which is a grocery store that I often um, visit to go plant shopping as well. And then this one is another Calathea Dottie. So it's always interesting to see um, plants um, with different names. It's interesting how different nurseries will call them, but uh, overall they're the same plant. Like right over here, we've got a Monstera Peru, nice looking Monstera Peru. Love the um, texture of the leaves. And then this shingle vine plant has grown, um, outgrown its um, its um, plank. And then right over here, we've got a Raven ZZ next to that Peperomia Red Luna. And you can see that these plants are dark foliage. I recently discovered a Gothic garden plant um, IG and that's really cool where they have just a bunch of like dark uh, foliage plants I might actually do something similar to that with my plant collection like display them all and have like a little gothic um, section but we will see and then right over here we've got the back part of um, the plants here and they're also nice and organized nice and full they've got trays of exotic angel plants by Costa Farms and then right over here, we've got some bromeliads um, mixed in with um, orchids. And then right over here, I would say this is my favorite fixture or end cap area of um, this whole Lowe's. And these are the dendrobium orchids. I love that a lot. I love that they're in these hanging crates. A really, you know, clever way to display them. And these are all for $38.98. This one's probably the best looking one that I would show you. This is one I'm gonna take down actually. Look at how beautiful the canary yellow leaves are. And then I like that it has purple as well. So if you um, know about the color wheel, yellow and um, purple are on opposite sides of the color wheels, which makes them um, complementary colors they definitely accentuate the the colors that you know when they when put next to each other look at that purple and look at that yellow love that this one is in full bloom this would last you for about a month or two in blooms if you just give it the right um the proper care and i really do like that this was um you know if i was going to actually add a orchid to my collection i would definitely get that particular one in that particular plant and then right over here, we've got some Begonia Maculatas, highly varied, not Begonia Maculatas, um, Diefenbachia Maculatas. Those are highly variegated. I'd love to be able to grow Diefenbachias, but again, it's just about my lighting conditions in my home. I don't think I can provide it enough of bright and direct light. And right over here, we've got another beautiful Monstera Peru. This is the thing about this Lowe's is they actually stripe their, um, their plants vertically. I like that a lot just because you can see the plants and that is a good way to merchandise plants. This one's for $19.98 in a self-watering planter. And we've got another beautiful Skindapsis Trubei Moonlight. I am looking for the perfect healthy looking one. Like this one's actually a good candidate to go home with me. Um, one that doesn't have browning, one that has some type of trailing. Um, you know, Skindapsis Trubei Moonlight, what I like about it is obviously the foliage shape, but also just the color. It's really a striking Skindapsis. It's one that I don't really see in trailing hanging baskets, just because I feel like that plant particularly is such a slow grower. And right over here, we've got an Aglonema um, Snow Spring or Spring Snow, however you want to call it. Love the white variegation, super. Um, 
you know, variegated. And you can see that this plant can actually hold its variegation even in darker um, lighting conditions. Again, aglonema can tolerate lower light conditions. It wouldn't be the best place to put them, but if you have no choice, they really won't decline in health. They may get slightly leggy, and that's the problem with aglonemas is they can get leggy. Um, just make sure you stay on top of the watering and provide it some blast of like bright light. So here's the thing about plants. You know how you can set a plant, put it in a dark corner, and feel like you have to put it there the whole time? You can always take the plant and put it right next to a, um, you know, a bright light for like a day so it can really photosynthesize that would be one of my suggestions is you can cycle your plants and move them around your um house plant collection um this one for instance is in an, another aglonema that i really want you guys to help me find the plant id i love the white stems white stem aglonema are my favorite but you know to go back to that the only plants you don't really want to move around in your space once it's settled are fiddle fig leaves or ficus lirata there's a couple of plants and then maybe ficus plants in general like i've been told ficus triangularis variegata um, don't like to be moved as well otherwise they drop their leaves actually just any ficus so for other than that any plants that you have if you have it in a lower light condition you can always cycle it out to where like maybe two to three days it's in its regular spot but maybe one day you blast it with a lot of bright and direct light put it right next to a window and it's good to go and you can see that there is an overflow of plants so this lows tends to most likely keep their plants um healthy and also probably sells through a lot of plants so that's the thing about retail i feel like it um you know you get replenishment when you sell through plants and um this one i could tell probably sells through plants although i would say if you are a plant foldy or a viewer out in austin texas can you give me a little bit more insight maybe in the live premiere chats or even in the comments if all of your big box stores are as organized as this i will say the nurseries i visited were phenomenal i would say the austin plant nurseries just blew my mind with just how the plant the diversity of plants and just the plants that were available it will definitely give my dallas plant nursery tours um, a run for their money literally just because i would even drive down three and a half hours to go plant shopping at these nurseries that i had i discovered in austin so guys be super excited i will be editing those videos and having them available throughout the week i'd love to be able to show you those plant nursery tours so even though you are here mostly for these big box um, plant shopping videos i really want you guys to check out the local plant nurseries just so you can see what plants are available what plants that are not necessarily available at big box stores that way we can kind of diversify our plant collection so and you can see i passed by a bunch of these orchids Lowe's has a lot of orchids, but what I appreciate about Lowe's orchids is they have diversity. So right now we're looking at some Philanopsis orchids, which is orchids you would see at grocery stores, big box stores, even convenience stores if they carry them. Orchid, you know, Philanopsis orchids are there. This one actually is one that I like too. It's a little bit different. Look at the face of this um, bloom. Beautiful looking orchid. Got that, has that subtle um, um, violet lavender color and when you pan over these plants are just super um full and then we've got some more philanopsis orchids here i'm going to go um show you the detail look at that lovely veining on that orchid right next to the white orchid right over there and then we've got some more orchids here you know if you really wanted to grow orchids it would be very tempting to just buy all the different color blooms um i have had such good um you know self-restraint when it comes to adding orchids to my collection because i know i'm not going to have the same type type of um care conditions for it and then right over here whenever you look at like overflow this is what i would consider a plant fine so i know some people might find this common but for a lot of us Epipremna um, arium mandula pothos. This one's for $7.98 in a self watering wick um, planter. This one is nice because this mandula has very interesting variegation. I wish it was more of a vigorous grower, but highly variegated um, mandula looks so amazing. And the, the shape of the leaves are larger. Um, they have more of like a circular heart shaped leaf. Really like that rounder leaves versus just the other pothos. 
Now, when you grow um, mandula pothos on a totem pole, moss pole, or something of that nature, the leaves get extremely large and they're absolutely stunning. They would be more of an um, alternative for like a Monstera albo, just because if you get them to grow up a pole uh, long enough and large enough, they start to fenestrate. And then right over here, we've got a Dracaena Lime Light. This one can get really large as well. And that one is a starter plant for $5.97. And then this is another Palea plant. So I'm all about these Palea plants. Mine have been doing very well. This dark mystery Palea plant is one that I would also add to my house plant collection. I'm just looking for the healthy ones that have come straight from the box. I find that, you know, big box plants, when you are lucky enough to find a restock where they have like boxes on a pallet and the workers are just taking them out, that is the best time to buy the plants just because they haven't sat in a big box store. They've literally come from Costa Farms. And then right over here, we've got a Pachira Aquatica money tree. I'm sold on getting a money tree, but I'm going to go ahead and save some money to get a variegated one. I think that would be cool. And you can see we've got a bunch of hanging baskets right over here. Love this about Lowe's. Love this Lowe's particularly. And we've got a bunch of Lucky Bamboo. Looks like somebody changed their mind on this Skindapsis right here. But nonetheless, beautiful looking one. This one is for $16.98. It's one of the, it's a smaller hanging basket. So if you don't want the larger ones, you can get the smaller ones. I'm going to go ahead and put that back up. Maybe somebody will pick it up. And then right over here, we've got another variegated teardrop, Peperomia nice looking variegation it's not so blunt with the variegation just the subtlety is nice i like the neon um, color of the leaves and it's just a nice looking color it's got a minty um, uh, vibe about it as well that will be a peperomia i will eventually add to my house plant collection and then we've got tons of other plants here and then this one right here is a hedra helix guys or a hedra helix hedera helix mini atom Look at the, how small the leaves are. Super cute, nice variegation on it. And I'm actually curious to see if there's somebody on YouTube or Instagram that actually grows just English Ivy. If there is a channel or an IG page, please leave that in the comments. I would love to see that. And then right over here, we've got some bromeliads, kokedamas. So kokedamas are basically growing plants in like a moss ball, the originated that style of planting it originated from Japan, but this one is super cool as well. This one is actually using a coconut um, husk as a planter. I think that's really nice. You know, less pollution. We're not using plastic, so I like that a lot. Um, I do want to start doing kokodamas as well. There's just a lot of ideas I want to do for my um, my plant collection. I just feel like I don't have the time. I do scale back here and there. So sometimes if I don't make a live premiere chat or a live premiere um, video, you know, I do apologize. I am trying to give you guys daily content, although some plant foldies say to take it easy and not do as much. But I, I, I don't know. I'm really ambitious. I, I enjoy the process of making videos. And I did want to show you this planter. I love ginkgo trees and that is a ginkgo planter right here look at how cute that looks i love that a lot and then what else do we have right over here we've got some more lucky bamboos not a really a big fan of growing lucky bamboos in my collection um, but i do want to show you this so this is another zz waffle plant very interesting looking plant right here um you can see that plant id i like the purple undersides of the leaves and we're about to start finishing up and wrapping up this plant um, tour, but I did just want to show you what else they have available on the back sides of these. So we've got another Peperomia teardrop. We've got another um, lipstick plant. So this is an interesting lipstick plant. Look at how, um, how thick the leaves are, how waxy they are. They remind me of um, Hoyas almost, but this one is a little bit more shiny. I love lipstick plants. Um, this one is a, a specific one you can see that there is a bunch of new growth as well and i like that this is actually starting to trail this one is for 2098 not a bad looking lipstick plant definitely am a fan of this and my plant foldies if you haven't already if you made it this far into the video thank you but i ask that if you guys could please hit the like button i've noticed oftentimes we'll have like 60 plus people in the live premiere chats but we haven't gotten as many likes um, if you really want to show support for me, that is all I'm asking is hitting the like button for my videos. That way I can continue to make daily videos just because I'm afraid that if my videos don't get the, that type of engagement, it may not get pushed. And we definitely want to do that so 
we can grow our plant community. So if you guys can right now, um, you can pause the video, hit the like button and also leave comments in the comment section. That's really all I ask in terms of just support. I do want to thank those that have taken the time to even, um, engage with me daily and even the ones that have left a tip on some of my um my videos i've noticed that there are some super stickers or super fans where somebody will drop like a five dollar um usd tip i really appreciate that as well because that funds my uh, my plant obsession and my plant shopping so kudos to those that have done that as well and then you can see there are a bunch of exotic angel plants right here. Um, I do like that um, flame violet. That's one I'm going to also add into my houseplant collection. I am looking at these Belgian waffle plants. So I have the snow white waffle plant in the purple waffle plant. The Belgian waffle plant has more like caramel um, variegation. That's one that I would consider getting. It's just that my snow white waffle plant isn't doing as well. It's starting to crisp up. The purple waffle plant is doing amazing, however. And it's interesting how certain plants will do even if they're in the same um, species. Some of them are a little bit more finicky than others. But we're just going to pan over here one last time and take a look at some of the overflow of plants. Right over here, we've got another croton. This one is a gold star croton. It's got a little bit more narrow leaves. That's really nice. And it would be really interesting to see a mature version of this plant. Um, crotons, you know, right now you can see that these are the small ones, but they can get very large. So it just really depends on the optimal conditions you give it. Um, they definitely like a lot of light. They don't like to be overwatered. And that's basically it. They prefer warmer weather as well. They don't do well with um, cold fronts. But you can see Austin, Lowe's, you did amazing. Look at how beautiful your, your plant setup is. I love those fixtures. Haven't ever really seen that at a local North Dallas plant a nursery um, Lowe's. So, you know, kudos to this Austin one. It makes me excited to travel to Austin a little bit more frequently and see if I can actually visit a bunch of big box stores like Walmart's and different Lowe's and even Home Depot's. But I want to show you this last time, Dendrobium Orchid. This is probably the best looking Dendrobium Orchid I've seen at any Lowe's I've visited. And mind you, I visit a Lowe's pretty much every day. And then here's some more orchids. I don't know what this orchid is. I don't know if it's another version of a Dendrobium orchid, but I do like this a lot because look at that. Look at how delicate the blooms are. I'm thinking this is a Dendrobium orchid just because of what it, the canes that it has, but I love the yellow. And then this one is for $18.98. I also like the planter, the terracotta um, planter it's in. Nice looking orchid. This is this Lowe's is just giving me a lot of happiness today, just being able to feature that with you. And I really hope you plan foldies. My viewers watching this video right now with me. Um, you guys are also enjoying this and feel like you have been walking around um, with me and hanging out. We've got some more orchids right over here. Some more Dendrobian orchids. So they have an overflow of orchids, but I, what I like is that they haven't like um, jammed them up too much to where it looks cluttered. And then we have some more Philanopsis orchids right over there, but beautiful blooms. Flowering plants bring me joy. They uh, make me happy. And then I want to show you this right here. So this is another fixture, a Costa Farms fixture. I don't often see at any of the big box store um, lows in Dallas. And this is just more um, trending tropicals by Costa Farms, more Costa Farms plants. We've got a Raven ZZ. We've got some Sansevierias right over there. We've got another Silver Streak Pothos right over here in this um, self-watering planter. These ones look super lush super healthy i probably should have bought this um today but i refrain from buying plants you know my trip to austin cost me a little bit more i had to get an airbnb and obviously the gas that um, it took to drive here but i was inspired to visit plant nurseries i have a new um term called plant tourism where i'm specifically going to um different out of um you know out of town stores out of town cities to go um, visit plant nurseries so i'm going to be traveling much um, this week, I'm also be, I'm going to be driving down to Houston to see if I can film a couple of um, plant nurseries there. It's about a three and a half hour, four hour drive from where I am based at. So plant foldies, definitely check that out. Look forward to that. But 
I am going to be ending this video soon. You can see that all of the plants are starting to fill up at Lowe's. So I hope if you're in a different um, part of the country that your Lowe's is as full as this one. As always, please like and subscribe to this um, channel. Leave a comment for me. I respond to all comments. And as always, happy planting. Happy, um, you know, week. And we will, I will catch you on the next plant video. So definitely check me out again and keep Austin weird, but also keep Austin super organized with plants. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.